KC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. Hello, gang. What is happening? Excited to be here with you guys. Uh, we're going to talk about some poop stuff because that's, you know, that's my jam. That's kind of what I talk about, right? So... Today we're going to talk about uh, kind of some constipation issues and we're going to kind of have that uh, kind of lead into intestinal blockages. I, I get a lot of questions, you know, people concerned uh, about this and I, I kind of just wanted to go over some of the things that, that we see and, and, and stuff like that. So uh, basically we're looking at the situation of, you know, kind of, hey, I can't poop. I can't poop. And. Uh, so people are like, hey, do I have a blockage? And that's kind of what they're wondering a lot of the times. Um, so what we want to look at is the fact that things can slow down, you know. And when things are slowing down, then they can slow down a whole lot to the point where they just don't move. And, you know, a blockage or, a, you know, they call it a bowel obstruction too. That can be something else that people call it. Um, it can be a really serious issue. Like it can, it can be a go to the hospital kind of an issue if you really have one. Um, but it's pretty rare. And uh, I think I've only seen one actual case where it was like it's time to go to the hospital. And it was with a client where this happened before I knew them. So I've never actually seen a case that was happening. Um, but... Uh, basically it was a serious thing where he was like, he, he described it as I'm lying on a table and they take out all of my intestines and my intestines are on the table next to me as they fix things. And then they put them all back in me and <laughs> I have not experienced that or witnessed that, but, um, you know, that's, that's a significant kind of thing. So what I don't want to view you view is like, uh, do I have a blockage that's causing my constipation? Because I, I just don't see that that's the case with most chronic constipations uh, that I hear from. But what you can look at it like is that things have slowed down enough to allow undigested food or fecal matter kind of to accumulate and for a lot of junk to even stick to the walls of the intestinal tract or the colon. And as that sticks, you know, just like, uh, you know, cholesterol sticking to the side um, of a pathway can thicken that up to enough where it blocks it, so could fecal matter or food that's not being digested and just kind of slows down and it can build up enough to the point that it could create a, a blockage. And with a serious blockage, you know, it could cause... Um, basically food to get backed up to where it's going to expand your intestinal tract or wherever it is in that intestinal tract to the point that, that can create a lot of cramping or discomfort and could even, you know, rupture that tract so that whatever was behind the blockage, whatever food that was, could seep into the system and create a lot of problems and uh, even fatality kind of thing. So not trying to freak you out with that if you're, if you're constipated. Um, but that's as serious as, as it can get. It can get dead poop serious is, is what it can get. So what we want to look at is the fact that most of these minor blockages end up kind of moving as you get things moving along better. They end up moving out and you might poop out something that looks a little different than your normal stool and it could be just something that was kind of backed up there for a bit. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in depth uh, a little bit later but what's really ideal is to correct the problems that could cause this before you get some type of blockage and hey I can't I haven't I think I pooped back in March I think you know you don't want to you don't want to be saying that to your friends uh, out at lunch oh yeah I pooped in March I'm golden so we want to correct the underlying causes and you know, the only cause, it could be a, a genetic issue. There are things of, you know, twisted bowels or, you know, a person could have a tumor that's uh, expand, you know, closing that pathway down a little bit by a tumor growth getting big. So there's a wide variety of things that could possibly cause this. But in most cases, um, it's not going to be this uh, serious 
uh, I need to go to the hospital right now issue. And it's going to be an issue of things slowing down through the intestinal tract. So we want to talk today a little bit about those things that can slow things down and how to speed them up. Because basically, uh, the food moves, uh, our stool moves through the intestinal tract at a speed according to its acidity level. And a lot of people don't understand that. So if a stool is leaning on the, on the acidic side, it will move through the intestinal tract faster. Sometimes it'll move so fast that you're the captain of diarrhea and maybe your diarrhea is lifting you off the toilet like a rocket shooting off, you know. Uh, maybe it's an urgent diarrhea type situation. And that can happen, not the only cause, but it can happen from the stool, the acid product leaving the stomach after it's been acidified in the stomach and then there not being enough bile flow coming from the gallbladder to neutralize those acids. So now those acids are still like burning your intestinal tract. So the body's like, get this out of here before you digest a hole in my gut. So that can create a loose stool issue. But that's just an example of the stool moving at a fast pace because it's too acidic. So we can also look at the other side of that, and this is often uh, at least a contributing factor with chronic constipation issues, is that the stool cannot be acidic enough because the person is not making enough stomach acid or maybe they have some type of bacterial overgrowth in the stomach and the waste from that bacteria is often very alkaline. So maybe your body's making enough stomach acid but this alkaline waste from a bacterial overgrowth that shouldn't be there is neutralizing your stomach acid so you're not really acidifying your food and you're not really breaking it down. And when that's the case, uh, then it'll, it'll move very slowly through the intestinal tract. Does that make sense? I think that that would make sense because the fast stuff moves fast and then the slower stuff is, is moving you know, much slower. Um, so a lot of times people just need to either uh, fix their um, stomach acid production or maybe they just need to supplement with uh, HCL, which is hydrochloric acid, what the stomach makes until their body can start making its own stomach acid again. Um, but they often need to find a way to acidify the food in the stomach and uh, so that the stool is more acidic and it's not so alkaline. If there's no stomach acid, but bile is still flowing enough to, you know, alkalize that stool even further, then it can really slow down and it will move through the system so slow that it will just kind of stop moving at times. And some of that fecal matter or some of your stool can kind of attach to the intestinal walls or the colon walls and get kind of stuck there. And maybe when things come and get the stool moving again, maybe all of it doesn't move through. So maybe some of it is stuck to the walls. And then it, as this happens again, more stuff gets stuck to the walls. And then eventually you can get this um, like blockage. So what we like to do is we like to see people uh, acidify that stool a little bit, not only by making sure that the stomach is acidic enough, but they may be able to use tools that could help the intestinal pathway become a little more acidic. Because, you know, that overgrowth that we were talking about in the stomach, that could also happen in the small intestines. You know, we hear a lot about uh, SIBO now. All the cool kids have SIBO. Everybody's talking about SIBO. So uh, you probably don't have any friends if you don't have SIBO. So everybody talks about SIBO, and it's basically just an overgrowth in the small intestine that should not exist there. You know, we want we have good gut flora, but a lot of that good stuff we want to be further down the line. And uh, that's not to say that no bacteria should be in the small intestine, but a lot of the wrong type uh, are in there and it can create um, a lot of trouble just like it can uh, in the stomach when it, when, it, when it should not be there. So you may have everything going well in the stomach, but the small intestine could have a, an overgrowth that the waste product is very alkaline and they're alkalizing that environment and slowing down the stool that way. So we can kind of take steps to uh, wipe out any kind of bacterial overgrowth, whether that's in the stomach or in the small intestines. Or we can take steps just to try to increase the acidity level 
of that intestinal tract and to help things move a little that faster. Sometimes when you can acidify the intestinal tract, both with uh, HCL in the stomach and then maybe using like a, a vitamin C in the form of ascorbic acid, if you can acidify that tract a little bit better, all of a sudden the environment is not so uh, conducive to these bacteria growing out of control and going crazy. Hey, Matt, what's shaking, my brother? Um, so we're, we're in our uh, members-only so, uh, support group right now doing this uh, episode live. So um, you know, people can come in and ask questions and stuff like that. And we'll get to some of your questions here in just a second, guys. Um, but when you can acidify that intestinal tract, then not only does it help the stool and everything in there move a little easier and at a faster pace, but it makes the environment less optimal for these bad bacteria to thrive and to, and to replicate and to grow out of control and to make the environment too alkaline. So there can be a lot of benefits to trying to acidify those things. Now, not all forms of vitamin C are going to acidify the stool. We like to use... Um, a form called ascorbic acid, which is just a fraction of the whole C molecule, but it's also what you're going to find in most pharmacies or health food stores. When you just buy vitamin C, you turn it around, and you see it's really just ascorbic acid. So it's really not a good form of vitamin C to lift the, 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 the amount of vitamin C in your body because it's not the whole C molecule, but we find that it's very effective at things like helping to acidify the stool so it moves better and also to even lower urine pH if someone needs to do that. Which brings us to another common cause for the stool slowing down and eventually possibly creating either a partial blockage or even a full blockage is uh, what we call an anabolic imbalance. And uh, if you're not familiar with this, you've never heard us talk about this before, um, I, I explain it all in all of my books and we have a free digestion course at kickitnaturally.com forward slash course that you can sign up that helps you understand how digestion is supposed to work, how to figure out what things might not be going well, and the steps to improve it. And it also shows you how to run simple tests at home that you can do with tools you can pick up at a pharmacy or you know, drugstore um, to see if maybe there are some imbalances that are creating trouble in your body. So you can go through that course to kind of learn all that stuff. It's totally free, and uh, you can figure those things out. I'm not going to go into that a whole lot here. But if a person has an anabolic imbalance, it can cause the body to send more of its water to the kidneys and less to the bowels. So if there's not enough water going to the bowels, now the bowels are going to get more dry and hard, and it'll get harder for them to move, and that could really contribute to a blockage if things just can't move through because it's just all dried up. We need moisture and water to kind of keep things moving through there. So a person could not be drinking enough water. That could be one thing. Uh, but maybe they're drinking enough, but the body's sending too much through the kidneys. Maybe they get up to pee three times every night because the body's sending a lot of the water through the kidneys. That's a common sign of a possible anabolic imbalance. So you can see that there's two very common issues, and this isn't every issue that can create constipation or some type of blockage. It's just the two most common ones that we see, and they also tend to be the, the easiest to correct when you know um, what you're looking at. So what we can do is uh, someone may have like a partial blockage, and um, we'll talk about some of those signs here in a second. But if they do, they can kind of get things moving a little bit better uh, and a little more efficiently and as things move through the system better it can start to kind of knock some of that blockage that's stuck to the side of the intestinal tract or colon wall or wherever it is you know it's, it's movement that helps things move better and things that are not moving kind of eventually get out the back door so that's really what we're looking at you know now there's a lot of other more advanced things that can you know create a blockage kind of like we talked about in the opening and those are kind of medical things that I, I'm not going to dig too deep into now because I'm not a medical guy um, and, and those are issues that you might have to work on with your doctor but if someone is feels like oh I wonder if I have a blockage they can do these kind of things and see if uh, the signs that they're looking at that make them feel that they may have one start to improve. And so that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about simple things 
that you can do to improve your whole digestive process, which can lead to improvements that you might see uh, basically in reducing the odds of creating a blockage. Or if you have some type of partial blockage, um, you could uh, eventually create some improvement and get that thing moving again. So let's look at some questions that some people have. Let's dig in and see what's going on here. Amy, Amy says, if you've had long-term constipation problems, is it possible to have a blockage but not realize it? If your stool is moving very well, should you assume everything is okay? Or could you still have problems you're not aware of? What would be some signs of this to look out for? And it looks like Michelle has a similar question. How do you know if you have a blockage? Are there signs to intestinal blockages? Um, you know, when you look online, you kind of look at the basic uh, signs that they say, and it could be, you know, vomiting. It could even be diarrhea. Diarrhea can be a sign of a blockage because basically the liquid form is the only way things can get through at all. Um, so that can create some diarrhea problems. Um, bloating is a sign. Constipation is a sign, of course. Uh, cramping. Decreased appetite, inability to pass a stool, or even gas. If you're having a hard time passing gas at all, like that just won't move out, then that could be a sign of a of blockage. Um, nausea, severe pain, swollen belly. You know, these are all the signs that they talk about, but all these things could also be signs for other problems. Even just a, a bacterial overgrowth could create a lot of these problems. Um, but, you know, when you think about vomiting, that could be a pretty big one because <clears throat> that could be the body's way of saying, look, we, we don't have a way to keep this stuff moving that way. We're going to send it all back where it came from. You don't, don't, send, don't send anything else down here because we can't deal with what we have already. And, you know, that toxicity of, you know, waste and, and toxins not having the ability to move out can um, create a toxic environment that can lead to, you know, nausea. If, if things are backed up or even if the, an overgrowth is creating a lot of gases and toxins, that alone can create um, bloating and uh, the expansion of your intestinal tract can also create cramping. You know, it's like think about tying your you know, small intestine to the door and then slamming the door. That's going to hurt when it stretches out like that and it can hurt just from the expansion of bloating from gases from an overgrowth or something. So... There's a lot of signs that could, uh, that they talk about showing up for a blockage can show up for a lot of other reasons as well. So it can be kind of a tricky thing um, to really figure out and, and know what's going on. Uh, and is it time, you know, do I need to go see a doctor or what? You kind of have to figure that out um, for yourself. But, you know, to get back to Amy's question, this is where I feel they're most commonly going to show up from is from a chronic constipation issue where it's just like months and years and even decades that some people have this problem where stool is very hard to move and they can only move by, you know, laxative or I, I got to go, you know, get a, an enema or, you know, I got to go uh, get some kind of water blast up the back door to get anything to come out. Um, it's these types of issues where it would make sense that the more fecal matter could get stuck on the walls and, and create trouble. So this, this is, is where I'm usually concerned about it. But I know Amy and I know she's taken a lot of steps to improve um, the underlying causes of her issues and things seem to be moving well now. So my assumption is you know, don't worry about something else if it's not a problem. Don't let me talk about, don't go to WebMD and think that you're going to die by Thursday. That's what I'm saying. Just because I'm talking about a problem doesn't mean that it's your problem. Um, don't create more stress than you need to. But, uh, you know, what I like to see someone do who has been dealing with chronic constipation is once they get things moving a little bit better, it might be time to increase maybe some fiber supplements or some fibrous uh, foods um, without going too high carb because that could push you just more anabolic again and uh, create imbalances of sending water to the wrong place. But what I don't like to see people do is say, I'm constipated, so I'm going to use fiber. Like when you search the internet for I have constipation, the only advice out there pretty much is fiber and probiotics. It's horrible advice. 
Um, and those are very small pieces of the puzzle for most people and almost never enough to fix the problem by themselves. So when, you, when you're constipated and you just start taking fiber, it's like trying to push a ping pong ball through a metal pipe. It's just, it's not going to go through there. But once you can start acidifying things correctly so that the stool will move at a better pace, then that acidity will help things move through and uh, you know maybe make sure you're getting enough water to go through the intestinal tract through and through the bowels then as things start to move better then fiber can be a great idea to help push things along to help grab stuff that might be compacted to the side of the intestinal walls and pull it out with it you know a little bit at a time is kind of what you're looking for and so that's when I feel like fiber can be beneficial after someone with chronic constipation has started to improve that and get the stool moving a little bit better not and not before same with probiotics sometimes the, the bad guys are in charge down there and throwing probiotics in there is just going to create a battle it creates a lot of discomfort and uh, you know it's not that probiotics are are bad in that regard you still need to do that but sometimes uh, people do a little bit better by taking steps to wipe out some of this overgrowth and uh, we're going to talk in depth about that in the bonus members only episode for this episode uh, in, in just a bit um, so those of you in the group here will get to hear all that or if you're a, a KIY member you'll get to hear those bonus episodes but what we don't want to see is someone just try and force things through the metal pipe if it's not going to move. Fix the problem first, um, clear out an overgrowth that might be a problem, and then the fiber is appropriate, and then the probiotic is like necessary. Once you wipe out bad guys, you have to put in enough good guys to kind of keep everything in check, or the bad guys could come right back and, and take over again. So probiotics are important. I don't want you to think they're not. They're just very rarely the answer um, let's take one more question here this is Carly actually emailed me and uh, wanted to know about gastroparesis I feel like we've done an episode about that before uh, but I uh, she says I've been in and out of the hospital since March after I ate a meal one night and I knew right away my intestines were paralyzed I had a large amount of Brussels sprouts after having some new sticky collagen powder and now I can't get my intestines working again. Please help. Also, no, do digestive enzymes. I'll get to, I'll get to this in a second. And she says, I, I think I need a team of professional doctors because my swelling and lymphs and circulation, nervous system, intestines, everything needs to be looked at and tested. If it was just a blockage, I think I would be happy at this point. Um, all right, well, First of all, if you find a doctor that understands how to correct constipation, that is a special, special doctor. He is something of uh, of, 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 a, of a mystery. <laughs> he seems to be very difficult to find um, because the advice that people tell me that their doctors told them to fix their constipation, it, it's, it's horrifying. It's horrifying. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of times people with these kind of issues will go to the doctor and <laughs> And they get all these tests done, and the doctor's like, yeah, everything's fine. You look great. And they're like, hey, I haven't, I haven't pooped this year. I haven't pooped this year. And, uh, you know, they just, they just don't have answers for them. They're like, well, some people just poop less. That's what, I have a lot of people tell me that's what their doctor told them. Yeah, some people poop less. Um, so uh, I, I can't say that that's definitely going to be the route you want to go. But if you haven't taken the digestive course to at least first understand how digestion is supposed to work, see where your chemistry is are you dealing with an anabolic imbalance do you have signs of low stomach acid like you know burping or bloating or well you have constipation that's a pretty strong sign of low stomach acid um you know acid reflux can be a sign uh so there's lots of things to look at low blood pressure that can be another sign that you're not breaking down your food correctly so you know when uh when things are this backed up I don't view it as oh man you had a bad meal that was some bad luck that was a really bad meal and now your body doesn't work because of a bad meal now you could get food poisoning from a meal and that could go into the system and that those bad guys could kind of take over and create an overgrowth that creates a lot of problems that's very common 
And when someone is not creating enough stomach acid to break their food down, bad guys are getting in 100% of the time. Uh, they're just, they're everywhere. They're just, they're on all of our food. It's everywhere we go. I just said go and something flew into my mouth. You know, it's just how it works. So that stomach acid is the barrier that keeps the bad guys out. So if you're on an acid reflux drug and you're turning off your stomach acid, your bad guys are coming in. The door is open. The party's there. It's let's all have a good time. Um, but you don't need to be on a PPI to have low stomach acid. There's other things that can restrict the body's ability to make proper stomach acid and stomach acid could be low enough for bad guys to get in. But, you know, when you look at this happening with one meal and all of a sudden everything was broken, I don't doubt that that happened. I believe that that happened. But that was likely just an issue of enough to push things over the edge. Um, you know, a, a sticky collagen should break down fine and go right into the body. It's not like you're you're eating a, a paste. A gor I think Gorilla Glue is the best glue out, right? That's the new, all the cool kids use Gorilla Glue. It's not like you're doing that. It's just a collagen powder. Um, you know, jelly is sticky. That's not going to plug up your, your intestinal tract. Um, I eat Brussels sprouts weekly and uh, I poop like a champion. So don't view it like you had the wrong food. It was just probably enough to, it was the final straw. Like things were probably already going the wrong way for a long time before that meal kind of shut everything down. But uh, again, it's, it's not that, uh, you know, my whole body isn't working. So because I have this swelling, my nervous system doesn't work, my intestines, you know, all these things. A lot of times it's all connected. And if you've ever heard me talk about anything ever, I mentioned digestion, you know, because it just it, it's the foundation of everything that we do. It's how we get the nutrients out of our food. So when digestion isn't working correctly, which it's not if you if you're not pooping, um, there's problems there that are are making it so digestion is not working well. And when it's not, you're not accessing, accessing, accessing nutrients from your food. You probably don't have the ability to remove toxins and waste. Like all of these things are huge issues that lead to a lot of different problems. So that's kind of a big deal. And a lot of times that person is not as broken as they thought. They just have one or two really issues that are creating a, a lot of trouble. So that's kind of what you want to look at. Go through the digestion course. It's it's free and it's easy and it, it's it's you know I taught it, so I'm an idiot. You know I'm a comic. I'm not like a doctor that is going to talk above what you're saying. I don't. I'm I, I'm I'm in my boxers. I'm not even wearing pants. You understand what I'm saying? Like I, I'm going to talk at at at, at anybody's level uh, to where they're going to understand how this stuff works. And it's going to make sense to you when you see what's going wrong. You're like, oh, yeah, well, no wonder that's a problem. That makes sense. And that's what we want. We want when things are broken for them to make sense when we look at our physiology. And, oh, well, yeah, well, our blood pressure is 90 over 60. Of course, we're tired and depressed. We don't have any resources in there. So that's what we like people to do. Look at their physiology. Don't try to use remedies. The, the remedy that could help you is, could make another person worse. So you really got to look at the person. So when you're looking at these issues, try to dig into that a little bit more. Now, we're going to go into our, our members-only episode now. And, and those of you in the group here, we're just going to keep hanging out. You don't have to run off anywhere. But if you're listening to this on a podcast and you're a member, then just go to the members-only feed and you'll get the bonus episode. And um, if you're not a member, just go to kickitnaturally.com forward slash K-I-Y, kick it yourself. And uh, you can sign up. It's only $9 a month to be a member and uh, you can cancel any time and all the members get free shipping and natural reference. So it's, it's kind of like your membership turns out to be free anyways. But in the bonus episode, we're going to dig a little bit deeper on, on steps that you can uh, use to correct an anabolic imbalance if you're dealing one. Things like magnesium can be very helpful with that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about more, uh, some more advanced, uh, supplements and we'll talk about some steps you can take to reduce an overgrowth in your stomach or your small intestines and how to acidify an alkaline stool that isn't moving properly. And I'm kind of going to freak you out about celery a little bit. You're kind of, you're getting a little freaked out about celery. It's going to be fine though. And, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit more about 
when to implement fiber because there's this thing that it's like the biggest thing I like people to understand about an intestinal blockage is that when stuff gets stuck on the intestinal uh, walls or the colon walls things still move through and a lot of times they do it by kind of spiraling through the intestinal tract and so there might be a blockage but there could be like this spiral opening where this everything can get through at least a little bit and so if someone starts to move things out you can search on this on the internet um, that there's uh, I like people to understand that there could be a possible alien sighting that's really what it is it's an alien sighting and when they get the stool moving and they use enough fiber to uh, to push out any compacted fecal matter you can get this like spiral stool looking thing that look it might look like a furry alien creature like I've I've actually heard from clients that have had this happen where they, they had a stool and well and uh, they came out like oh an alien came out of me I'm, I'm going to the hospital right now but if you search like YouTube and stuff about the you know crazy blockage coming out you'll see that it's kind of like this spiral thing that was just stuck in there and it it, it kind of came out we'll talk about this a little bit more in the bonus episode but um, I like people to understand that just in case it happens they don't think that they actually had an alien because I think that would that would flip me out just a little bit okay so um, we'll see you guys next week. Go to kickitnaturally.com if you want to submit topics you want us to talk about on upcoming episodes. And uh, if you're here in the group, we'll uh, keep going with this a little bit and talk more about this in the bonus episode now. Go, go, go.